So, <coughs> we're doing these podcasts. And today. And today, we're talking, we're taking, we're turning the page from alien fun to horror. Murder. Smart. Yeah. Murder. Indeed. Murder. So, um, I mentioned in the last podcast that we did that I had a raging rager <laughs> for true crime right raging now. Raging hard on. <laughs> so. Big old rager. Maybe we do need the hand clapper for this one. But, um. You're sick. You're should big I, old should rager. I lose the jacket? I feel like I was debating losing the jacket. <sighs> there we go. Yeah. Loosen. <laughs> Gotta wiggle it loose. <laughs> I wiggle. don't know what that means. Oh. oh. Oh, Should, oh, oh, yeah, I know, right? Okay, wait. Get a little more relaxed. Oh, I'm oh. bumping around everything over here. we got to be the same this level. Oh, awkward. wait, does that mess up the camera? Okay, good. All right, yeah, we're getting comfy here. You can even yeah. adjust your little back pillow so it's more of a lumbar support. No, I'm okay. I just needed to oh, back up lumbar. a little bit. All right, there we go. <sighs> so anyway. Oh, I have a notification on Facebook. Oh, it's nothing. So anyway, what it's going to be is we're talking about Chris Watts. Is it Watts? Well, let's back up. We are talking about Chris Watts today. What are you talking about? <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Just such a ham. It's hamming it up. Okay. So, welcome. <laughs> First of all, this is the Aaron in Wonderland podcast. I'm Aaron. I'm Joseph. This is Joe. And this is a dancing. Aaron and Joe in Wonderland. A dancing hot dog on my hand. Wearing Tim's with a pizza. Yeah. I love the Tim's. That made me laugh. So, go ahead. What are we talking about today? We're talking about Chris Watts. We are talking about. We're talking about Chris Watts. <laughs> viciously murdered, murdered his family. Yeah. He murdered his family. Technically, he killed it's four people, but more crazy because like I've been like so detached from it because I've just been thinking about it. Like, I don't know. I haven't really been thinking about it from the point of view of like the victims and um, like they're still going on, right? Yeah, now. it's like still happening. Like, like these are real people, you know. So he's in jail right now, and it's important to remember that it's like very serious, and we take a lighthearted approach to like a lot of things. So if we're like laughing or making jokes about something. Um, it's probably just because we're uncomfortable about it, honestly. But, um, yeah, so I'm excited to start doing the true crime stuff. So if you guys want us to do any certain true crime things, you can send us an email, drop us a line, do your thing. Um, how are you doing today, though, Joe? You doing good? I'm doing fine. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew trying to get sponsored. <laughs> we're just out here trying to get a scholarship. Give us some Mountain Dew money. I feel like there's one YouTube guy that's like Red Bull sponsors him or something. I don't know. I'm old, so I don't really know. But um, but I feel like this. That Chris reminds Watts. me. Since we're talking about YouTube, um, check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, um, and it's YouTube.com/slash Aaron in Wonderland. And also, we have a Patreon. If you guys could help the podcast, it's Patreon.com/slash Aaron in Wonderland. So. I don't know, just donate some money so that we can we hit different those, goals. If we get to 5,000 subscribers, yeah, we're going to... Look a hair on your mic. You're going to see me swallow some sausages. I don't know why you keep talking about it. If I were you, I'd be trying to like get out of it at every chance. But like he just keeps on digging himself deeper here into this hot dog hole. Oh. <laughs> oh. I want, the, I want the subscribers, that's why. Joe's in. But, Joe is in. I mean, this is like... You know, if if we get more Patreon subscribers, we could be able to do this like full time, and that would be like ideal. But um, we already have we already do this a lot as much as we can, so we back do it all for you guys. Chris Watts, let's get back to the story. Well, it's, it's just a general intro, but yeah, Joey really let's wants to dive back. into this. I want to dive back into this because it hits home, <laughs> close to us. Couldn't be any closer. <laughs> That only happened a year, uh, two years ago, technically. Oh, damn. Okay. Joey's exactly right. Excellent point, Detective Joe. So, this happened in Frederick, Colorado in August. This happened in Frederick, Colorado, August 13th, 2018. That's the day that um, Shanann Watts. So, 
That's also, how she wanted to pronounce her name. Yeah, this is a side note. So Did she just spell it Shannon? Her name was Shannon. And she had been married prior, but then they got divorced. I guess they got married so young. So she was in witness protection. No, they got married young and it was just like, I don't really know. I should have looked more actually into her first marriage, but I don't think it was, I think it was like inconsequential. Like it was just a quick marriage. They were young. They got divorced. And then she like changed her life and was like, I want to be called Shanann now. And like everybody respected that, like her family did. And since she met, first met Chris, which they met online, by the way, like, they met through Facebook. He sent her a Facebook message and then she um, responded to it. And then they just kind of like started talking. Um, we're watching, we've been watching this documentary on YouTube, like this Chris Watts documentary. And that's kind of, we've been talking about that a lot. So we're kind of like going through that a little bit and we'll be kind of like outlining it a bit. But there's a lot more details, like so many details that they didn't hit on that we've been finding out. Just like... <laughs> Well, nothing that's not Excuse public me. knowledge. You know, it's like little pockets of info that we keep finding. But, um... Murder. Yeah, so Shanann is the wife's name who was murdered, the murder victim. And then she has a daughter named Celeste and a daughter who they call Cece and a daughter named Bella who are three and four. And one in the belly. Oh, yeah, and she's pregnant. She's 15 weeks pregnant, which is... How many months did we say that is? Like... Uh, it's like two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Good math. Is it? You know, 15? Four, eight, 12. Oh, yeah, I guess like three and a half, my bad. Yeah. Yeah, three and a half. We're, yeah. we're good at math. Yeah. We're adults. We're mathing. Yeah, real quick. So, so yeah, so there's Shanann, Celeste, and Bella. They're like the primary people that this case is about. Christopher Watts is the murderer, the family annihilator, which like family is a cool way to say like you killed your family. So like I just feel like it's like they should make that a T-shirt. Chris should, Watts family annihilator. They should change like the name That's of whatever they call him. I'm sure somebody somewhere has a shirt that says that. What is going on? Um, Where is that dog whining? Upstairs. Uh, we got a lot of dogs, people. So, um, I guess, well, we could start at the beginning. So we'll just start when they first like met cause it's just a tiny story. So apparently like I kind of mentioned it before, he, um, Christopher Watts was a friend of, um, like Sh Shanann's Shanann's. like cousin or something. And so he saw her on Facebook and sent her a friend request. She's like and Prince there's actually the like down. videos of her talking about it online. She's like, sent me a friend request and I figured we'd never meet. So I agreed. And then we talked and she said she was in a, like a bad place. I think she has lupus, like some kind of like disease. And so she said that she was like very sick with lupus and in like a depressed place. So she just kind of had like correspondence with him and it was nice. And then they ended up meeting and falling in love. And literally they had been married for, they had been together for eight years total, but they had been married for six, like at the time this happened and they had two daughters so they together got married after two years. and another one. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. It's they're not like they course. were just like together for a short period of time. Not that that would be okay, but it's just weird. I don't know. It's just like, it's just so weird. Cause that's like your entire life. That was his whole life. Like he structured this whole thing and then just decided that he didn't want it. So rather than like, well, he went, he went, he went from, real dark with it. He went from Mr. Mr. Gouda in shape and was like, you know what? I need a new honey. That bun. is true. That is true. <laughs> I so need my new honey bun. there was photos. If you look online, all of this is online. You can just like search it. So there's photos of Christopher Watts previously in their marriage. And like he was heftier. <laughs> he was like fatter. He was just fatter. And then like recently. Aaron, you could say whatever you want about him. The man viciously killed his par his, uh, his entire family. If you want to call him fat, call him fat. <laughs> he fed his food. <laughs> but then, so then after Shanann had the kids and stuff, I guess he like got into working out. Um, and he got into like really good shape. Like he would run all the time and stuff and like he was in good shape, but, um, I don't know. That's just, it's literally like a tale as old as time, you know, it's just like, oh, this dude's in shape and he's like, oh, I need space, honey. Like, I don't know. It's just yep. the whole thing. Tale but they, the thing time. is, is that every well, Western has that going on in it. Every Western <laughs> Joe watches. Westerns That's a tale as old as time, Aaron. Tale as old as time. 
Does it mean that we're going to get a singing deal off of this? Right. We're going to go on The Voice. If we so get like, 15,000 subscribers, we'll both apply for The Voice. We should just go on The Voice anyways. There's a duet. So they had plans to have another child. They had two kids together. They had plans to have another child. Um, and I don't think it was planned. I no, think, it was 100%. Was really like planned? they were trying. Because he even says in the video, he's like, oh, I guess when you try, it happens. Oh, because I like in the video, he looked more like shocked. Like he came in and yeah. was just like, oh. So we'll step it back a little bit just for like timeline oh. sake. He was having an affair with one of his coworkers, whose name was Nicole Kessinger, who he called Nikki. Which was really odd because the day that Shanann and the kids went missing, Shanann's best friend, Nicole, came to the house looking for her. And Chris keeps referring to Nicole's best friend as Nikki to the police. But then later when he's being interviewed, he like denies ever cheating on her and denies this and denies that. And it's just like disconcerting to like hear him say the name Nikki so many times. Like, that's I don't know. It was just lover. weird. I don't know if it, yeah, if it was just me, but that was like something that I felt was like very odd. Um, so he starts this affair with his coworker. It starts just, I actually saw a documentary today, which I'm happy I saw it because I thought I knew everything about this case, but I saw a documentary today and, um, it showed email correspondence between Nicole and Christopher Watts and cause they work together. So they were just like emailing and Chris Watts had sent her an email like, nice to work with you, like, blah, blah, blah. And then she emailed him back, like, oh, thanks, you know, like, you're friendly. And I keep our, con she was like, I keep our conversations between us. Like, they were normal emails, but there was, like, just every one of them had, like, a sentence or two that just seemed like, let's sneak around together. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how to explain it. And then she even, like, exclusively, like, emailed him back and was just like, you're so nice. And, like, it's hard to find honest people in this world. And I'm just looking for someone to build a beautiful life with, like, you have with your wife and your daughters. They're so cute. So she, like, acknowledges his daughters. Oh, and they met in, like, June. It's, like, June. And I think, like, June 14th is whenever he, he like, added her contact to his phone. But he saved her name as, like, some fake name that looked like just some work, like, business associate or something. Hmm. And he well, had, a, like, a calculator. Was, huh? Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, that wasn't all. But all he had a calculator app with, like, photos of her on it, like, sexy photos um, of her on They're it. They're just co-worker photos. I just send them to her. She was, like, in her bathing suit. They were in a hotel room. And it's he's, you can see him in the mirror. He's, like, taking the photo. Oh, he's the one taking the photo? Yeah, which was weird because I didn't realize that at first. It's not weird. It's, like, makes more sense because at first I thought it was weird. Like, who the hell's taking this picture? And then I realized it was him. But so anyways, um, I feel yeah. like it's easy to, like, get caught up in only focus on like him and her and like what was going on. But like, I guess like at the heart of this, like this woman and her kids like lost their life, you know, and that her parents like lost their daughter and their granddaughters. And it's super sad. Like, um, <laughs> talk I, about I, I inappropriate wasn't, I wasn't, laughter. Yeah, sorry. I wasn't laughing Sicko. at that. Something funny happened with the dogs. That's why. What is Moon? He's like so whiny. Okay. So, okay, so we talked about the beginning of their relationship. We talked about the the affair. We touched on it a little bit. So, in the, the, Shanann had a very, like, public life. Like, she had a Facebook that she was very active on. Um, she was... Wait, let's give him a time frame. So, she added the... the the estranged lover in June, Chris Watts, June, friend. Yeah. and then all this happened. His, uh, everybody went missing in his family in August. Yeah. Two months. So all this happened in two months. That's the quick. thing too, is that like when people are doing this kind of thing, they're like living in like a fantasy world, you know? So it's almost like he had completely lost touch with reality or something. And like, Watching the interview tapes, he almost looked like a little boy who was, like, just trying to, like, lie his way out of things and, like, see what stuck. Mm -hmm. Like, see what people believed. Like, because... And then his parents... His parents apparently had a tumultuous relationship with Shanann from the beginning. Like, they didn't care for her. Oh, yeah. They were like, they oh, she was her. married before. So... 
after everything happened, like after she was murdered and after the grandkids are murdered, they're like, they're just doing weird interviews on TV. Like the mom is like, we forgive you. And I mean, and that's fine. You know, that's his mom. I understand. But that she's like talking shit about Shanann who was murdered by her son. It just yeah. seems like he was very like doted like, on as a child uh, and like he never could do wrong. So I feel like the mom just like, we'll get into it later, but just like believe the first story that he told that happened. And just like really like no matter what was like nope that's what happened that's what it was, my he my little my little Christopher couldn't do that. Ugh. So they were married for however long like six years. They had the two kids and they were trying for this third. So there's a video online, and it's Shanann like revealing to Christopher that she is expecting their third child and she has a shirt on that says "Oops, we did it again." And he walks in. And he's just like, hey. And he's oh. like, yeah, yeah. He is so unenthused. Like, oh. she, she has, like, the pregnancy test. And he's like, oh, I like that shirt. Does 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 the pink mean that it's a girl? Yeah, he's like, does the pink mean that it's a girl? Like, and I said that to Joe. I was like, who is, like, married to someone and has had multiple children and doesn't know that you can't tell from peeing on a stick? the gender looked, of a child he looked the way he reacted was like it was like the first like child they had like Dude, hey i'm pregnant Whoa. he was literally like i don't know it was very i told chris i was like if ever like we have a kid and i like tell you and that's how you react i'm just gonna like i won't say i won't say it but i won't say it i tried to look at this camera so i feel like it looked like i went cross-eyed because I was, I was like i won't say it but aaron you're always cross-eyed stop joking around <gasps> <gasps> so um yeah so yeah but there's tons of footage of her on social media where she would like post things like this and um she like made all these posts about how he's such a good uh, yeah, dad yeah, yeah. it's literally on father's day she made a post like dedicated to him which is like june 15th or like june 20th i feel so safe in his arms yeah and these are the people that like he's supposed to be like loving and protecting like making sure nothing bad happens to them it's like fucking nuts okay I, so i think we're getting ahead of ourselves because if nobody knows what happened okay, okay. like i feel like we need to tell what happened all right so we sort of gave some of the backstory he had like an astro oh there's also we'll get into it a little oh. bit later there's there's he had a little boy many, toy many many la lovers that he had in the in the mix that it's nobody true. knew about but he was talking to that girl so yeah his, so his he girlfriend Nicole, or he met you know nicole through work they're talking That's whatever um he's telling her that he's like getting divorced but she eventually finds out that shanann's pregnant and if you would do like a simple google search which they showed that she did like the police like looked into her phone records and like internet search records and she had searched shanann watts like at lengths like she had you know basically like stalked her online i mean wouldn't you you were fucking her husband <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing is that she's claiming she didn't know that they were married she didn't know she was pregnant she didn't know this she didn't know that but like she didn't have what a very public even, what if it was even crazier like uh uh this should be more for like a conclusion but what was even crazier like she was the one that was like you know what you should do for me if you really love me and and that bitch Shannon. Shannon. <laughs> Shannon. Shannon. With no, that dumbass name. Seriously, like, that is that is a theory. That, and it's funny that you, like, even came to that conclusion. Even because even on, like, the tape, she, like, I, I was just thinking about that because on the tapes, how she was like, oh, no, I know, I didn't know anything yeah, about that. Yeah, they interrogated and her, like, and it was like, it was almost like watching, like, the Jodi Arias interviews, like, what she was trying to do, like, but it being successful. You know, like, she was just like, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. And, like, was, like, charming her way out of being in trouble. Because there's a chance that she, like, knew something and they did like she deleted she tried to delete all her, her texts like from him and to him but anyways okay i feel like we keep getting ahead of ourselves so so we'll go to august so, what was it august 5th, uh, 13th? august 13th, august 13th 2018, 2018 frederick colorado so it's only, basically only a couple hundred miles from us but a stone's Not throw even. from denver so yeah we uh, we live like south a little south of denver not too south, though. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> a little south of Denver. Um, this happened pretty much in Denver. It was, like, a little north of Denver, um, like a suburb. Um, and it was August 13th, 2018. That was that was the morning that 
he ended up what the cops and his one and his wife's uh friend were there yeah waiting so for him at, at that the Watts evening home. or the night Ugh, before which was still me. august 13th like in the wee hours like at two o'clock in the morning shanann had been dropped off by her friend nicole um from a so august 12th or no it was like the 13th, the 13th two early in the morning okay, okay you know okay. so is that how time works <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a very educated you know, man Last, i am not a smart man so My name is Aaron. You can call me Aaron. Bye. Robot broken. <laughs> does not fixed. compute. Do not compute. Do not compute. I can't, you're right. Mountain Dew does make you burp. <laughs> Mountain Dew got me burping. That's what you said in the right. other got video. got me burping. I'll tell you that. But back to the Watts home. So, yeah. So. August 13th, 2 oh, a.m. So, yeah. 2 a.m. She gets dropped off by Shannon. her friend <laughs> from a business trip. And she basically sold stuff on... Um, facebook like i don't want to say it was like a pyramid scheme but like she was a part of like the thrive like whatever that is like lotions or the pyramid scheme yeah the lotions or scheme. what's other like protein powder like you know that like hair hair shampoo that kind of lotions. stuff so she had like a bunch of friends that she was in constant contact <coughs> with she was like always streaming online but she went to a um like a meeting in phoenix arizona Shout out to Phoenix. We love it there. Is that why she was getting dropped off so early in the morning? Yeah, her friend dropped her off because they had just arrived back home. I don't know if they drove or I don't flew think in a plane. A, I don't think a pregnant lady should be out that late. I know, she right? A, Joe, it's not the fucking 1800s. So anyways. <laughs> in the 1800s, I, I think they had pregnant ladies plowing the fields. I think like now that's 20, like 20, that they actually have like pregnant Yeah, can you fly like, if you're even pregnant? I don't, I don't even think, know if that's I, like a thing. I, I think at a certain should point you you're not allowed to fly. Should you be descending altitudes like that? Like from yeah, Denver I thought, to Phoenix? I thought you weren't allowed to fly if you were pregnant. I don't know that. Can, Chris, you know, can we kind of got quick, off on like a, a little tangent there. Can you do a quick fact check for us and just give us a thumbs up or thumbs down if you're allowed to fly if you're pregnant? I don't know if it's a real thing, but we'll continue. We'll continue. Chris likes to pretend like he can't hear us even though he's wearing headphones attached to our microphones. So. Okay, so her friend dropped her off from this business trip, Phoenix. We don't know if she flew or whatever. She's pregnant. So that morning, that morning, she's supposed to go to the doctor because she was not feeling well on her trip. And her no friend sure. knows this. And her, her friend is like, oh, call me if you need me to drive you. Like, well, cause they, it was in Denver. She had to go to like the city. That's what they kept saying. Like, I'm about to drive her downtown. So you're not even far from the city. Her friend like, um, ends up trying to get in contact with her and can't reach her like all day. And then her friend shows up at her house with her like, Six. You can't fly what, when you're past 36 weeks. Good so she would have been able That's to fly. That's like very pregnant. I think you give yeah. birth at like 38 weeks. <laughs> but um, huh. they're just like, we don't want you to give birth up here. That's like the only rule. They don't, they're not worried about your health or anything. Um, but that same morning, Chris Watts, when he went to work, ended up pulling his truck up to the Watts home and loading it for what... 50 seemed to minutes. be 51 minutes by videotape of his neighbor because his neighbor's a creep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true that did happen so yeah and that's a great point that you touched on his neighbor so his neighbor had footage like doorbell cam footage that I don't was know if like it was doorbell i think he was just like a a, a camera camera yeah that was his, uh, it might be a ring doorbell but i don't know how it was it looked, seemed too high yeah I think you're right. I think it was just like a surveillance camera. Yeah. But he had a camera and it, I didn't like face. You could just see just barely part of the driveway over the guy's Yeah. Uh, so truck. it sh actually showed Shanann coming home at 2 a.m. And it didn't show anybody else leaving except for Christopher Watts that day going to work. And he backed his truck into his garage and like loaded it for like 50 minutes, which even his neighbor said was very like uncharacteristic of him. He's mm -hmm. like, he was out there for so long. And then. And he never, he was like, he never backs his truck up to the yeah. garage. And so, okay. So we just have to back up though. So on this morning, whenever she doesn't show up to go to the doctor's office, her friend calls 911 and literally just says, 
like reports are not missing. My friend's been killed she by her wants, husband. She, That's what she said. Get she over needs here. She a wellness check. She says she wants a wellness check done <coughs> because she's concerned about her friend. I'm pretty sure that Shanann was diabetic. So she was like worried. She's like, she's diabetic. She has two little kids. She wasn't she's feeling pregnant well. Too, she's that pregnant too. like mess with her stuff. Yeah. So. So warned concern. Yeah, definitely. And she texted concern. Chris too, didn't she? And her, like her yeah. And her him? friend was so persistent. And you know, like prior to this, they had had like six, five or six weeks apart. So she had been texting her friend, like, you know, she'd been texting her friends, like, this is what's going on with Chris. Cause he had been being very distant and saying like, he wasn't sure if he wanted this third baby. Like, she's probably like, this motherfucker's going to kill me. And they're like, what? Yeah. And there, and then she ends up, she woke up dead. So I um, wake up dead. This might be a two parter. Maybe this could be a two parter. I know. So, um, it's a one parter. <sighs> Yawn. Go to keep telling your story. Where are you typing? Oh, I don't know. It was just typing everywhere. My story. So her her friend Nicole shows up at the house with her teenage son. They're trying to get in the house because they know the garage code, and it, they can't get in. The garage code has been changed. So she's trying to get a hold of Chris, and he's not like responding. So the police officer, the police officer has body cam footage. He went around the whole house. Yeah, he went around the whole house. Was trying to get in. He was like, yeah, the front door was open. Now he opened the front door. Yeah, but he couldn't legally go in. Yeah, he couldn't legally go in. He like wasn't. So he was just trying to see if he could see anything, so he could have cause to go in. And he was like yelling in there, like, yeah, let yourself be known. And he was just so like they were all so worried. So everyone's super worried. (laughs) And then Chris shows up. He's like Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, too soon. So. Then Chris shows up because they called him and he's like, oh, I'm at the work site. I'll be there however long. So this dude like flies there because he said he was working like 45 minutes away, but he's there in like 20 minutes and he gets there. Um, Cause he's so concerned about his family. Ugh. So, uh, and the instead of going, cam footage, instead of going right to the door and opening it up and looking for his wife, he runs up and shakes the cop's hands like, how you doing? Yeah, he like ran right up to the cop and shook his hand, which was super weird. And then he didn't say anything. He doesn't seem concerned. And it's like, you know, everybody always says like, you don't know how you'd react, like blah, blah, blah. But this dude is like, you can just tell he seems like a little kid who was like caught with his hand in the cookie jar, you know? Like, like, <laughs> well, we've the, all been there The way before. he's acting is just so unsettling. Like, an uncom- it makes you uncomfortable even if you don't know him. Like, you can tell he's uncomfortable and it creates uncomfort. I think, like, even if people don't have, like, a history of, like, knowing about body language. I thought I heard, like, Jeopardy in the background. I think if people don't have a history of, like, knowing it's about body beginning. language or whatever, like, it... Even if you don't, it's not hard to pick up when, like, people are uncomfortable or, like, I, I don't know. I just feel like instinctually, like, you know yeah, that. You're right. It's not hard to tell when a man comes running up to you and has viciously murdered his wife and two children. Well, I'm just saying the way he no, was No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. I know it sounded like kind of sarcasm, but just the way I was saying it was like, it like yeah, he just seemed me. like. You could comment like, what you think about Joe's snarky comment to me, guys. <laughs> Me and yeah, all my 2,000 the... followers. <laughs> You're 2,000? No, that was a King of the Hill joke. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So, see, you are not. You don't even have that many people going to comment on your thing about my so, snarky remark. I can make as many snarky remarks as I want now. Let's get back to the murder at hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, he gets there from the job site, and he's, like, typing in the garage code... And then he's like over explaining everything. And that's like a telltale sign of someone who's lying. That's like just like over like the truth is short. The truth is like definite. It's not like this long like this happened and then this happened and then this happened. Like, I don't know. It just seems like he's like making excuses from the jump. Like he's like, oh, the garage pin thing's not working. And then he uses it and it's working. Like, why don't you just walk through the front door? The front door is open. The yeah, I don't open, know. Cause, cause like he opens the garage and then he's like messing around in Shanann's car. Cause her car is in the garage and they're like, Oh my God, that's her car. Oh my God. Her shoes. She wears every day are here. Well, oh my God. Well, you know Her what, purse is here. You know, now thinking about it, it was even weirder. Cause he opened up the garage and he walked in and he didn't even mention her car. The cop was like, is that her own vehicle? And he goes, yeah, that's the only thing she'd travel around. And I don't know why I would be here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, dude was so suspect. So, 
yeah. So I don't then, know how she got out of here with my two kids and no one saw her. Dude, they go inside and they're like walking around and then they go upstairs and they oh, live in a nice, your notes. they lived up in, in a nice neighborhood too. Oh like, yeah. It wasn't like they were like, uh, like lived like away from people or in like a crummy neighborhood where nobody like really like saw each other. They were like from like a nice neighborhood. They lived where, in a nice spot. Where, like people like would I at least saw her like somewhat do something. Like leave or whatever. If someone That's what else the neighbors came, were or, saying. Like they were like, and the neighbor had video like footage. Like like that no one came through in or out or. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So. So they they're going through the house. <laughs> when they're, they're in the house, the, house. the first, one of the first things they ask him is if his doorbell is a ring doorbell. That simple. They're like, do you have a ring doorbell? And he's like, oh, yeah, the ring doorbell is, um, it picks up sometimes. And he's like, oh, he ended <laughs> launches up saying, into this, like, over explanation. And then didn't he end up saying, too, that, uh, like, uh, Shannon had all the information for it and he couldn't log into it on his phone. He kept pulling up his phone like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, from, he was like, I don't have from, the app for from, it. Like, here. this dude was just like, he was not prepared for the cops He either. just looked uncomfortable, I even his gestures, like his honestly, body. Honestly, like, he was not prepared for her friend to be so persistent. Oh, I think then, he felt like he was going to have, like, a day to, like, get rid of all this, like, evidence and kind of, like, figure out what he was going to do with the bodies and, like, that kind of shit. Uh-huh. But her friend, was like, like cracked the case, like, I feel oh, like, on this Shit, no, you know? she went, and it's oh surprising no, pregnant woman police... not going to a, a medical thing? We on it. Right? We all need friends like that friend right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What was the lady's name? I don't even know what her name Nicole is. Nicole. Good work. Something. You, you know what? So, no, wait. Nicole, her friend, was a great mom. Way to, way to take you and your son to someone's house who you think no. just murdered someone very viciously and go in and confront them. Oh, you God. are the woman. I'll tell you <laughs> that. I thought you were going somewhere good with that. <laughs> It was good. Good intuition. Women's intuition. Yeah. You gotta trust the baby. She took a cop, so it was good. You know what I mean? Not initially. So. <laughs> Not initially. You know, you. When it counted. There's the body cam there. footage of like this whole thing, though. So you can. It's like. Oh. And that's while, what's crazy. While they were walking through the house, they ended up finding. What Shannon worked from home, and her her phone was her main lifeline. They ended up finding her phone there. They found she had two phones. They found both Uh-oh. of her phones, her purse, her wedding bed, ring, her wedding ring. The beds upstairs were stripped and, of oh, like all oh, of the like, linens. Yeah, yeah, that that was like, like that's like that's very like, indicative. You just murdered someone there. Well, what made it even like worse is they like walked in the kids' rooms, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, the kids don't go anywhere with their blankets," and it's like okay, like, kids always have their little things that they do and whatnot. That might be believable. But then they go into the, the bedroom, and the cop didn't say anything about it, I feel like, just to make him not feel weird. But, like, literally, yeah, there was nothing on there. All it was, was just, like, what, one white sheet that was, like, on there. Like, yeah. oh, like, you guys doing laundry? Nope. <laughs> yeah, it was very suspect. And then he even said, he was like, oh, I feel like Shanann was doing laundry. Very weird. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, needed that. Really needed that. We were both taking a water break right there. Uh, what, let's see. Well, oh, oh, that's they were... what I was going to say. So there's body cam footage of all oh, of this. Wait, her... wait, 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 wait. Okay. I want to say this before, but I forgot. There's body cam footage from like start to finish, like of the cops like coming there and being like, what's going on, Nicole, her friend, to then like slowly realizing what's happening, to then like interrogating him. Like, like there is footage of all of this with audio and it like I think that's why I'm so like into this and intrigued by it because it's such like a modern murder. Like this is how murders going forward are gonna all be. Like they're they're, they're gonna be like well documented. Like not like everyone obviously, but it's hard. But they're gonna like, have like, like evidence from start to finish yeah now, evidence from like... start to finish. So they have body cam footage and they end up going over to like his neighbor's house. And his neighbor says, he's like, oh, I have this camera that faces the driveway. And- oh, wait, before they even went to the neighbor's house, though, but uh, her friend Nicole, I feel like as soon as they found their phone, remember the reaction she gave? She Dude, was just like. she was like, tripping it, out. It looked like she like like saw her dead body or whatever because she was like, didn't even want to touch the phone. She was she like, was like <gasps> oh, her phone's here? <clears throat> like. She knew everyone was very unnerved and knew something was very wrong. And this Christopher dude is like, you could just the tell. The whole time he just like had like a real monotone was like, I, I don't know. He even, he was the one that brought out her wedding ring. Like he came walking yeah, out with it like this, like this. He was like being really super weird. Like, Excuse me, officer. Take this as evidence <laughs> too. My like, wife doesn't need it anymore. I mean. My wife. And he didn't have his wedding ring on either. Yeah, he wouldn't wear his wedding ring. So. Well, he's single now. Hey. Holla. Not for long. He was apparently going to get married to that other person. So the, the so cop his, there 
um, he had a funny name. Officer Coonrod was his name. <laughs> so he can't really like show any reaction. Just, like, like the yeah, police yeah, are yeah. trained to like defuse situations and not take sides and like that kind of stuff. So he's so they just go over like, to the oh, neighbor. neat. They go over to the neighbors with Chris and they look at the footage on his neighbor's footage with Chris Dude, right there. He has his hands on his head. He's like... He's like looking like, all right, like, when are the cops going to arrest me? Yeah, like he, he is like waiting to see what's on this footage and he keeps looking at the cop and you can tell it's like he's peeking over at the cop like side eye, like when the cop's not looking at him, but this dude has a body cam on, so it's still capturing like his creepy side eyes. Yeah. Um. So and, yeah. And the whole time... uh he's interviewing him that Chris Watts is just like uncomfortable and explains stuff like three or four times and just looks uncomfortable. He was like over and then, explaining, is he in the way? And then literally that Chris Watts was walking out of the door before he's even like completely out the door that guy turns looks at the cop and goes he ain't an actor right? Yeah his neighbor <laughs> like, who knows him on a personal level because even if you don't know the guy he's, he seems to be acting weird but this guy knows him like knows him because everyone said he was like context. an introvert like his wife yeah, was saying that and they never really saying, talked and he's like that's like the most he's ever talked I don't know why he's explaining stuff so much I don't know like when he said that a part of me felt like if Chris Watts was innocent that would almost play in his favor because it was like he was like kind of panicky and like out of being out of character for himself yeah you know what I mean but like where's like, my wife da, but, da, 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 da. I keep talking but even in the video he was like trying to deny like oh well maybe she came out this way he's like but he'd still pick her up right here yeah like walking he's like ah oh, this like, dude was like dumb as hell he was he like I said he was trying just to like see what stuck so yeah, when he's at the neighbors, his body language is, like, insane. And even when they they ask him, they're, like, interviewing him in his, the closet upstairs of his house. Oh, yeah. And and they ask him a question, and he answers no, but his entire body, he's, like, nodding yes. Yeah, he's just like, no, absolutely looking. not. I wouldn't hurt them. And, like... We've done a lot of research was, on body language. Yeah. Where you could say that we're experts... We'll, put our, we'll, we'll show you. Put, we'll, we'll our, show put you. our titles yeah, under here, Yeah, put our titles Chris. under here, Body Professor. I sew the elbow pads on later. So yeah, so um, for real though, that's real. Body language is very real, and this dude was like a terrible liar. Like, like you didn't even have to be like trying hard or looking to see all the things he was doing. So then the the the, the next day ends up coming about. And Chris Watts, instead of, you know, just lying low and, like, figuring out what he's going to do, now, what does he do? He goes on to news, two different news networks, and is just, like, standing there the whole time like this, like, I didn't hurt or murder my family, this vicious act that happened to them. Like, why is he talking about a vicious act? No one even thinks that they're hurt or anything. he was saying, he was all over the place, like, I imagine, like internally, he and was his just body language, out. how he was just it, uh, everyone he was, he was standing like, so, like, like he, he was just like <laughs> hugging himself basically. Like, but it's crazy because like uh, I can almost like not like I identify with Chris Watts, but I like his like anxious personality no, you type. You remind me of Chris. His Watts like anxious a lot. personality type. So I can only imagine the way he was spinning out. Like, like imagine, imagine. You know what I mean? Like you, you, know, you like do this horrible murder, and then like all of a sudden, like you're you're like out, you're like trying to like dispose of the evidence, I guess, or go about your day like normal, and then like you come home and the cops the are cops there. Cops are already. there. And her girlfriend's like, sitting there with her dude, son. Like not you're today, Chris. Already there. Like it. This just happened like a few hours ago. Like the like, timeline damn, is so good. narrow. Those cops are. And good. I think that's why they caught him so quickly. And the cops called in the FBI and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, which is very like noble because a lot of places will be like, oh, I can handle this. And it's like a dick measuring contest to see if like the local police can figure it out. The local sheriff, Chuck but Elderberry. You know what I thought? Uh, I just pictured the whole time while he was like, <laughs> like saying the the interview part, like, like, oh, oh, I want them back and all that. I feel like in his head he was like that time how uh, we were going to the movies, and I was like, no, we're not going to Cranberry. And you're like, yeah, we're going to Cranberry. And like in the, his head he was like, just don't say you murdered them. Yeah, they're murdered. Yeah, like, Damn don't it! Accidentally like, say. Like, yeah, I uh, I was the one that murdered all of them and just viciously. It's so killed them. sad. Like, okay, wait, I wanna. Can we? Can I just play it and will the audio play through my thing? No. No. Well, we'll um, have subtitles. Play and have subtitles. Well, I wanted the interview. Oh, of him? Yeah. So, but we'll anyways. Just turn it up a little bit so, on the Can we turn it up a little bit? What do you think? Our mics will pick it up? Don't do it? Don't do I it. Wanted the mic our to where, pick it up. Our where Waldo's guys saying don't do it. <sighs> okay. So, anyways. 
He's acting super weird, but the cops aren't really, like, letting on that they think it's him. So, yeah, so he so, goes on the news, like, that morning, and then, and then... Four hours later. Yeah, like, later that afternoon. I think they said, like, four hours later. Is it the whenever video. they took him for the... Yeah, they took him in to, for interrogation mm-hmm. to, the, to the thing. They took him in to, like, inter- like, ask him questions and stuff, so they start interrogating him. They ask him if he's down for a polygraph test. And he, just, and he immediately is just like, yeah. But and he just agrees like so, to it. But like the way he even said it, he was just like, yeah, like, like, like felt like he just like had to say yes. Like not even mm-hmm. like, and I almost feel like sometimes like, uh, whenever people say yes like that, it's like they're bluffing yeah. and then whenever, and then like, okay. So interrogation number one, like this officer is interrogating him. He's a, the FBI officer. He was a good guy. He was a good, yeah. They, the, both these people that were interrogating him. A lot were, of good like, techniques oh, he used. Amazing. Like so good. So there's the male officer who's from the FBI. He's interrogating him. And then he keeps, like, using these tactics. Like, he'll ask him a question and then just do, like, a long pause. And then it, like, cues Chris to, like, keep talking, like, like real nervously. And it's just very – he's doing a lot of very, like, guilty – Body gestures. Yeah, and, like in like indicating and, things. And just even certain questions that he asked, like certain questions people wouldn't, um, if you weren't guilty, you'd get like uh, defensive towards it and just like be like, why were you asking me that question? And he'd just like over explain. Yeah. They even put a timer on oh. for the one and he explained for like oh a minute. Oh my God, I know. Oh, and like Joe said, um, he kept referring to things as like vicious acts. He's like, whoever did these vicious acts or like this evil cruelty, like, uh, yeah, and, the, and, and nobody and, mentioned. Yeah, no one ever said that. Like, like he was no- like, well, what do you think happened to them? He's like, oh, the vicious acts that happened to them. And it was just like, mm. yeah. And people in general don't speak like that. Like if their yeah. persons are missing, like one of their people are missing, they're like, oh, we hope to see you again. Please return them. Like, like, like whoever has them, at least let us know that they're safe and sound. Yeah. They'll like, talk not directly like, to them. Not, not like, like don't create this vicious acts that I know you're doing that to them. Like what? It's weird, dude. So at the end of the first interrogation, the cop, the officer investigator from the FBI tells him like, it's so funny. Cause he's just like quietly sitting there and he goes, <laughs> nothing of what you've told me today makes sense. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> and he's like, I want you to go home and think about it. Basically things, go home and think the, about what you've done. The things he, he tells him though, was like, uh, uh, incriminating thing like if he actually did it like it would bother him and make him stay up he's like uh, he's like your, your mind will start be running like why did I answer a question this way or why did he ask me that or why didn't I say this he goes if those thoughts start running through your head give me a call and he made it seem like it was like like a good thing for him to have those thoughts but that was just like even more guilt yeah those are like the off. number one things that like guilty people will like ruminate about in their head after uh, an interrogation. They'll be like, why did I answer this way? Why did I do that? Oh God, did I fuck up? What do they know? So they let this murderer go back home and yeah. sleep where he murdered his uh Well, his dude, they had to have like kids. an airtight case. It's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have and they had like, him come evidence. Back. They, had him, they had him come back the next day. For, so this is like what? So if that this was the 13th, the 14th, like so it's days. like the 15th or the 16th right now. In the meantime, though, they interviewed his lover. His oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this. is Nicole Kessinger and she like she made it seem like she was like, I have no idea that he was even married, had any kids, we were saying like earlier. Yeah, and she like, made it seem like she didn't know, but she did. I feel like uh, I've worked with different people before, and you know when people like have kids or like are married. Yeah, or, like, like you, you just know things that. about people like in... They, they're, they're not John like, Hamm and Mad Men like hiding their entire oh life God. from everybody. Yeah, like and, and he has like pictures on his desk, I would imagine, he had, like an office. Um. I actually don't know if he had an office. He was like an oil. He worked for like an oil company. So it like, was called like it had like a. Really so how cool did they name. even like meet Darko. then? She worked like for like the oil. Yeah, company she worked there? for it too. But like they so both like had like w- women in the workforce. That's yeah, right. but they didn't Equality, both like work Aaron. in the field. They both had like desk like jobs. You know, like mm. he basically he, he was like, like an engineer he or like a technical kind of guy. Seemed like he ate a lot of donuts and then found uh, uh, insanity or oh yeah, he was fat for a while and then like, he got yeah. skinny. But, um, and then he's, he's like, actually my, a mechanic, and then, you know, and then he was probably like, oh, my wife's getting so fat. And they're like, she's pregnant. Nah, she's getting fat. Ugh, she nasty. Oh, oh God. <laughs> that was, we went off on a tangent. That was him talking. So, yeah, that was us being Chris Watts. That is so, nothing that me and Aaron physically or personally think. We do not stand by these claims. So the second interrogation consisted of the polygraph, which wait, wait, was no, no, so wait, 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 before, before we get, uh, before we get to that tiny <laughs> polygraph test, okay, we got to talk about this other supposed strange lover. 
Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, I don't even know how where this fits or like that they had any info they to back it up. They had a small they interview started, on it. They started this interview. It was on the news. And this lady was like, we can't cooperate this story or verify it or back it up in any way. But here it is. Uh, yeah, like, oh, <laughs> like you, you make your decision. <laughs> yeah, you guys, it's p- court of public We don't opinion. stand behind this. This is not by us, but we're publicizing it. Yeah, yeah. Don't blame us. So... They aired this video of this guy who was like super young. He looked like a kid, like he was like 20 years old. And he was saying that he had had a sexual encounter with Christopher Watts in the past. What was his name? Should I, look I have him no up? idea. Yeah, you should look it up. Uh, but like, which is fine. But then even the, the reporter who was interviewing him was like, you don't have any evidence. You're just claiming this. Like, how are we to believe you? And then the guy was just like, mm-hmm, I don't know. <laughs> like, so I don't know. That just kind of worked its way in somehow. And uh, he supposedly he had a 10 month affair with him. So it wasn't meeting the girls. I don't know if I believe it because this guy probably is just looking for like publicity, you know. Trent Bolt. Trent Bolt 29 says he met Watts on the dating on Meet app. Me meet in me in 2017. Bisexual or gay. Bolt recalled adding Watts admitted he had a family but gave the impression that they were separated. From Shannon. Surprise. So that's how you spell. That's how you'd spell it. Shannon, yeah. Hmm. Bolt, who disputed media reports, said he was a male escort. Oh yeah, that was another thing. During the interview, oh man, the police were like mean to this poor kid. During the interview, they were like, "So it sounds like you know you guys hooked up. He gave you some money. This happened. Blah blah blah. How are we to know you're not a hooker that blew somebody and then he, said, he got he killed somebody? So now you want some fame? That's like the exact words the police used." Bolt said that uh, he and Watts sometimes got hotel rooms, and also wait, wait, hold on. He also paid to have sev- several cosmetic procedures, including lip injections and Botox in his forehead and around his eyebrows. Oh, that's actually kind of sad. No, he got it for Bolt, not for Chris. Like Chris That's what I mean. It. It's like sad. Like somebody was like, I'm having an affair with this guy. They even watch Netflix together. Kids. I got him in the Orange is the New Black. <laughs> <Bolt says. laughs> Shout out, Orange is the New Black. That's a good show. Right? Bolt added that he met Watts two. Wait, wait. He met Watts two daughters, four-year-old Bella and three-year-old. But oh, but also in the report, I guess he said that they, he wasn't given any more information than what they went out on the news or, or any more information than he had on the news or what they said on like papers that they disclosed. So they yeah, think yeah. That, that he Ever, just people like, think he's you know just trying to cash in on this murder. I don't know. Weird, dude. <laughs> who would who would do that? <laughs> he was very proud of his daughters. Eventually, he found out he was still living with Shanann. He said Watts' claim was verbally and emotionally abusive. Why don't you just file for divorce, he said. She just won't let me see the girls. Still haunted by some of the comments Watts well, made about his family. He spoke about getting rid of Shanann. One time after Bolt said he heard Shanann shouting at Watts over the phone, he, he said Watts told him, there's going to be some way to get this effing bitch out of my life. The two eventually split in May 2018. According to Bolt, he blames Watts' lies for the end of their relationship. Days before the murders of Shanann, who was 15 weeks pregnant, and Belle and Celeste, Bolt said he received a long text from Chris Watts. Chris said that he was in love with me, Bolt recalled. He said he had never been so comfortable with someone. He said he felt like he could actually be himself around me. News of Watts' arrest afterwards came as a complete shock. I got ill. I wish I had never met him. Jesus. Like, what? I don't know. Okay. All right. That That's was just unverified. I, that that, one, on that one was there. just like funny because, like, even like even when the cop was like, I don't believe your story, the guy was just like, Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? He didn't even, he didn't even have a story about it. He was like, Whatever. Yeah, yeah. You weren't picking up bananas with your asshole with, with Chris <laughs> Watts, but I was. Bobbing <laughs> for fruit. Chris uh, Watson for fruit. Uh, so. That's horrible. Okay. He's a, he's a wow, we really killer. went off there. So, interrogation numero dos. dose, which involved the lie detector test and the hamburglar. Watch the <laughs> video and you'll figure out why. Dude. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think the lady looks like the hamburglar, just the clothes she was wearing. Sometimes less is more, you know, Joe? Sometimes it's like you say something, then you just keep on digging yourself deeper. No. Well, so, you know, if people watch the thing, they'll know. They'll know. Shout out to the Hamburglar. She was great. And Grimace. 
Oh. Okay. It's it's great that she got a job after slinging those hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, after publicly slipping those hamburgers, she got a well, second what chance. What would that be? What, what is that called? When you're like a... A, a burglar? Like, no, a lie detector like person. like the person Oh, she was a lie detector administrator. administrator? Yeah, 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 but she worked for she the Colorado it. Bureau of Investigation. So mm-hmm. like her job specifically was to use um, the polygraph machine. Yeah. And she had like... Top of the line shit. Like she A poly languine languine <laughs> I can't say the word poly Polylinguini. Lang- Linguini, you know spicy like little meatball. <laughs> yes. Spicy meatball. Dude, so she was like, I went to the best school. I went to the she she got him ready. She fluffed him up for literally like three hours. Like it, you could see the clock in the background going. It was eleven, and he didn't take the test till like four. Yeah, and it was like she was just talking to him about different things, and it she was so him, she was clear. Panicking, so she panicky. was fucking with him. She was because she was saying things that like outwardly seemed nice, but were like unnerving if you were guilty. She, you know, like she uh, built like, him up and then strike them legs yeah, out from underneath. She even them, said at one like point that. she was like, you know. It's really cool because only one person knows the truth in this room. Oh, and by the end of this, we'll up. all know the now, truth. No, she said two of us are going to know, and then we'll all know. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll go tell them, and they'll know. Like, she was like, fuck it. That'll be great. And, and, and if and you didn't do it. Everything was so oh, sensitive. Oh. She, he was sitting on a mat. His well, feet were on a mat. He had, like, shit on him. He's, like, all hooked up. What was the best is when they first brought him in, she said to him, she was like, oh, thanks for coming in and doing this test. She goes, you you, uh, you obviously didn't have anything to do with this because, like, if you did do it, why would you come in here and take this test? This is not prove that you did yeah you'd did be like a total idiot yeah you'd be like a here. moron to come in here and she he was just sitting there and the whole time like, he was just like yeah his face was like beat ass red and they said that they I, they were just fucking with him essentially they oh, yeah. wanted to break him and have him admit it because this is a tactic that they use when they they're certain of someone's guilt like they said that polygraphs aren't don't stand up in court they're they were literally it was for nothing else but to like shake him and make him admit to it a little it, which, bit of shaking big baby you know, you know what I'm I'm saying? so poster him up she ended up he took the polygraph test which only consists which was actually a very weird polygraph test i actually watched it and it was like Excuse he me. was supposed to they told him when i say this phrase lie about the answer like when they said before 2018 Mm -hmm. blah 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 and then he was supposed to just like say the opposite of whatever was true yeah they basically had him uh lie about writing that number three down no even during the test though like during the test that's how the test went like it was like i didn't realize he was supposed to say oh because they did do a uh sample test oh, initially and then, and then they asked for prior 2018 and he knew he was supposed to lie on it and it was yeah. like oh, that's smart and then but like mixed in were like questions he was supposed to be honest about and then questions that are just like known truths like do yeah. you wear shoes is your, is name, your name Chris Watt are you uh, yeah. are you sitting in a chair mm-hmm. like, am so, I giving you a polygraph test but dude this chick was so badass she was dressed like the hamburglar mm-hmm. sans the hat which mm-hmm. was unfortunate because that made I think the outfit I think she had it stowed away. <laughs> yeah. It is cool to take your hat off indoors, right? if you're, especially if you're in law enforcement. But um, <laughs> she had it stowed away. She's like, well, another case solved, guys. <laughs> just, <laughs> Call me if you need me. She picks she up and like walks another out. another feather in her I hat. I picture it with like big uh, like Mario gloves on. <laughs> like, <laughs> grabbing a suitcase and walking out with it. You guys have a good day. You know what's so funny about that yeah. is it reminded me of the one year mom made me be an M&M for Halloween. I feel like I remember that. And it, it came and, with the gloves. And it came with like didn't the it, big gloves. Uh, and I like it come with a bow tie? it. I don't know because it was a green one. It was like the girl. All it came with was like the big like shell thing that went over you and then like the weird the hands. Gloves. I feel like I remember that. <laughs> but those like gloves are so funny. Uh, and then like Lindsay had some mom. at some period of time. Shout out to Lindsay, my high school BFF. Poo, 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 cootie, cootie. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to our mom who dressed like the Grim Reaper when I was in preschool and came and frightened all the kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shout out to our mom who did that. Hey. Scary. I give her I give her credit for it, though. She wore it. She wore it well, huh? She scared those kids. She came in. She was swinging that sickle. Dude, that takes some she confidence. Didn't. She didn't really swing the sickle. I would have felt but she like definitely frightened super some children. conscious so um but back to the yeah so chris watts is a terrible liar so the lady the hamburglar calls him out 
Um, she's a really good polygraph interrogator for real. She works. This for is the where CBI. the rubber meets the road. She did say that. Did you put that in your phone? No, I just remember her. She distinctly said saying that. that, and it's like it she was even so made this weird. Motion. Like, dude, like everything seems like such a performance to me. Like, like it was obvious that they were like acting to get him to feel comfortable, and it was obvious that he was lying. Like. I don't she know. even started when they came back in after the test. They said it was a technique. She was like, "Thank you for taking the polygraph tests, like, uh, like, and built him up." And then basically was like, "You basically came in here because you know." They said to him, "You know, you wanted to tell the truth and get this off your chest. Yeah, you wanted to get something off your chest. That's why you came in, and took the polygraph." Yeah, test. yeah. So, so she was like, "We know, we know what happened. Like, we think you know." that you failed this test, that you and were that untruthful. you want to be truthful to us. And then he just kept insisting that he had told the truth. So then... But even when he was talking, you could tell, like, his, like, voice was almost cracked. He was like, I didn't lie to you. Yeah. And he keeps just insisting that he didn't lie. He's never really, like, do. asking where his kids are, what's going on. Is there water somewhere? I drank all mine. I can go get one real quick. So, um... <clears throat> <clears throat> watch we can make a water float in from the side like this hold your hand out over there Aaron. watch hold on use your use your jedi power star wars just came out oh. come on we can do it ah, ah, ah. Ooh, good work good work that was rough yeah nice nice <laughs> nice all right so um Investigator number two, bad. He was a the lady ended up just saying that he's like a really bad liar and all that. And um, that's when the Irishman and the Hamburglar came back in to interview him together. <laughs> the Irishman is the FBI agent yeah. who also was an excellent interrogator. So oh yeah, yeah. He uh, they kind of like cut things together. So at some point the Hamburglar leaves and they she takes all the equipment with her. I, like we said though she was setting up for hours and then they yeah. gave him the test and they left him alone whenever they left him alone and they were processing the test I think it, they left him alone for like an hour and he was sitting in there watching videos of his kids and then he ended up putting his head down and going to bed for yeah a and then bit. he put his head down and took a nap like I, signs of a guilty person dude I don't even know like they say like uh, I, I like I don't know if it's like a a full hard thing but like they think if they like suspect you of a crime and murder something like say they lock up like they expect uh suspect one of us to lock up three people and like whatever one <clears throat> ends up like sleeping like through the night is supposedly oh, the one dude. that's like like the Chris one that's would be like the oh. one. <laughs> oh like they I was definitely gonna say did it would be me but i wouldn't sleep through the night like because like, i would definitely it, cause, sleep because they say if like you're not involved in it then your mind's gonna be racing like why the hell do they even have me in here you're not gonna want to go to sleep but a guilty person is like like all right i need to like rest up and like they, they got me like right now there's nothing i can really do i can rest up now or something hmm. i don't know the whole psychological wow. thing but it's like hard it's just hard because like you can generalize like that and they <clears throat> do in law enforcement but, but some people act differently but yeah exactly because i'm a sleeper i could sleep all day Hell, you, could, you could be like hey, i don't close know what your I like oh finally some good I feel like I would some good like, oh, no one's talking got arrested. Oh. and like have like a depression nap but um there's two that guy and that girl come back in and they're interviewing chris watts and they just like want him to try to conf confess and they're not like they were more like leading him but not like basically saying like like tell us you murdered her you vicious victim they or were vicious very nice killer like, victim. very like like understanding you know and then, like coaxing it, them it, it was smart what they did you could tell he was like really weighing on like killing his family because they like showed pictures and i was looking at those videos and they were like how about we bring like your dad in and and you talk to your dad Dude, he lost and it when he was they brought like, up his he was dad like, oh he i think he he's ended like, up saying didn't, didn't he say he's like can i talk to him in the hallway and he's like oh there's people in the hallway we'll have him come in here and talk to yeah, you yeah so they mentioned that his dad's there which is crazy because and his dad thinks that like like you know what I mean that his son's not involved that they're just missing and doesn't it like like I, did they warn him that like they think like I don't know the whole story if they I were mean, like I'm sure. hey we sort of suspect your son of murdering the kids and I feel like he was like what no my son well no they way. had him in an interrogation room um and his dad was like super mild mannered so um maybe they mentioned like oh we're interrogating him you know he's a suspect until he's clear I feel like he had a kind of know because we went in there he like ended up asking me he's like is there anything you want to tell me about this or anything you're not yeah. telling or, or 
But like, I feel like he like still believed that his son was innocent because I feel like that's like your family. Ugh. You want him to like. I feel like, like I said though, it made it so real for Chris Watson. I think that's why he admitted to his dad because he was like, "Oh, like the shit was hitting the fan." You know, like he thought this was all just gonna go tell away. Him, tell him what he admits to his dad, Aaron. So, well, first what of all, does Chris Watts say happened? First of all, the interrogators are like, "Do you want to talk to your dad?" And he's like, "My dad's here." His dad flew in from North Carolina. This is happening in Colorado. Did you say North Carolina? <laughs> Put your shirt off. Just around your head like a helicopter. I said, "Put I your it. shirt off." Put your shirt off. <laughs> so, his dad, whose name is Ronnie Watts, he's invited into the room, and essentially, like Chris, immediately just blames Shanann. Like he's like, "Shanann killed the girls. He smother- smothered them, and I lost it, and I killed her." In a rage. He says that... So I smothered her how they, they smothered yeah, the, the kids. She smothered them, so I did the same to her. You know... And then the dad's like, so what'd you do like with the bodies? Like, he, you can see he's like processing and working yeah, through like, it. And like, then he's like, so oh my she God. Because I think his dad is saying, so she hurt the girls. And then and, you hurt her. And then you hurt her. And yeah. he's like, yeah. But like, you know what? Uh, like, now thinking back on it, like if he really wanted to like get a divorce, like if he like, you know how he said they were going through like separation, he told the cops that. Um, like if... This is like fucked up to say, but like if his wife killed the two kids, like, like, uh, <laughs> why didn't he just call the cops and he was out of it? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, his like, yeah. wife's like gonna go away from well, murder. Why would and whatnot. he hide their bodies? You know, like, why would he yeah. take them and then away he kept saying, and not like, call oh, 911 and, and see if they were still alive? Like, you, there's yeah, yeah, so yeah, many yeah. other things that would have happened if, yeah, that I were feel the like, case. It, like, uh, but. Like, cause in my mind, if I like walked in and my wife, like, like my two kids was like, like if she said I killed the, the kids, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then like, you found, like went over and like found, I feel like you called 911 immediately and be like, like they're not yeah, breathing, like, blah, 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 Like people have given dead people CPR for like hours. But he kept saying you know, too, like, he kept saying like, too, like, oh, I wanted to protect her. But if you wanted to protect her, why the fuck just well, strangle her? Even too, the, the interrogator, the Hamburglar lady from the mm-hmm. CBI, mm-hmm. she put, planted the seed like earlier. Like, did she do something to the kids? And he, like, you don't oh. want to tell us. And that's like he was like, she's literally like, said oh. when I said that to him, I saw his eyes light up. Like that was gonna be it. That's crazy. I don't remember that part, but like I feel like, yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, he blames his he blames Shanann. Which his dad is just like fine with, and then they even immediately weird. yeah like he like took the body somewhere. Dude, like, oh crazy. tell him oh yeah okay yeah okay, so oh sorry, sorry. what? So go ahead, just keep go ahead. I can't. I have to yawn. Yawn. Madam. <laughs> yawn brand. That's my brand. Don't buy yawn it yawn. out. That's my brand. Don't yawn it out. Buy yawn. Buy our yawn shirts. Like I sleep before I'm dead. <laughs> I sleep before, during, and after I'm dead. That'll be the slogan. It's weird that we're doing a podcast about someone who died. Ooh. So, R.I.P. So, um, he ends up confessing to his dad and telling him, like... Oh, yeah, and then the interrogators hurt. come back and in. And then the interrogators come back in. And it was weird. Like, the hamburger comes in and starts rubbing his back, like, She's real like, hard. are like, you mm, doing okay? You all right? You all right, little guy? Dude, they were just, like, trying to get him to admit it, you know? I'm sorry so to say, but I cage. feel like if as soon as that happened when they came in, they shouldn't have like. Uh, obviously, you show compassion for people, but you shouldn't have walked in and been like rubbing his back. Like it's okay, little guy. It's it was not, all it's part not of like the he, game. Like, seemed you know? like it was just like, like you know what? You go back out and play in the yard and be nice to everybody. Dude, like she was trying to like induce the feelings like in him. But like, I guess he's so victim, too. But wait, you know? I guess so too. What you said, if if she believes that. Like she was like, oh, did she do something? Saw his eyes light up. Maybe she believed that there was more to it, and being nice to him would like fest be like, you know what? That's not really what happened. What really happened is I was the one that did everything and ended up like. There you go. It her. takes him longer, but he gets it. He gets it. It's a long <laughs> game. It's a long <laughs> game. I'm just kidding. Chris always says that to me because I'm an idiot. Chris tells me. <laughs> yeah, all the you time. are. I'm kidding. You're not no. Gee, guess, yeah, Aaron, you're not no idiot. Believe I'm just me. Stupid. Aaron, did you ever hear the saying? You should say this back to him. It takes one to know one. I thought you were going to say stupid is and stupid does. (laughs) Well, now I know you. We ain't strangers no more. 
but there was something else I wanted to oh, say. Oh, the site, his work site. Oh. So rewind to whenever we mentioned Chris Watts was driving home from his work site because that's where he Oh, let's we'll see. Let's even bodies. rewind a little bit more. When he was loading stuff into the back of his truck to go to work, he was loading the body of his wife and two dead children, mm-hmm. who he said the children were actually alive in the back of the car when they went to the work site. So... I don't know if that makes it better or worse that he killed him at the work site or if he killed him at the house. Yeah, but, but how does it even make sense? Because you would have seen him putting them into the back seat. Or did yeah. he just jam them in the truck I mean, he bed lied about a lot mom. of things, so I'm sure he lied about that. He said, because this didn't come out until after the fact. He did, like, a jailhouse That's- interview. And um, it was just audio. Like, he did it over the phone. And he, like, admits to the things that he did. Jesus like, Aaron. that he killed the girls and that they were alive at one point. But he's told so many different stories, it's hard to know, like, what's true. All we know that is true is that he did this and then he, he ditched did their this. bodies here. He buried his wife in a shallow grave and then he shoved his two children in an eight-inch pipe <laughs> That was filled with oil. And didn't he end up saying in the interview, like, oh, yeah, he, an oil put, tank. he put them in two different oil tanks. And he said, I could tell that one wasn't as filled up as the other by the way the bodies hit. Yeah, by, like, the splash it made. An eight-inch eight hole. He put the, like, and then on the, the video That's we like watched. That's, the most disturbing part, too. The, the video they watched, it said that their shoulders, like, I thought their heads couldn't even fit through that. But he said that their shoulders were 13 inches wide. Oh, wait, it was nine and a half, I think. Nine and a half? I thought it yeah. was. Yeah. I thought it was. Okay, because we still. watched like a Dr. Phil. I oh. accidentally watched a Dr. Phil thing, and he was like, "We're not trying to be gross, but their bones had to be broken to fit in there." And like, I hadn't even thought of that, but like, Jesus, dude! Like, think about this, because they said that they were they were all suffocated, right? They said it takes so two little tiny babies. They, that he like it folded takes, up and stuffed in a tube. It takes two to four minutes to suffocate somebody, like, for them to, like, actually die. <sighs> I'm getting kind of sick actually talking about it now. <laughs> like, because they, I remember the one interview, he said that his one daughter, like, the older one, like, knew what was going on, and she said to him, like, are we going to end up like mommy? Because they kept saying, like, is mommy okay? And then, because they, they, like, knew what happened or, like, saw, they saw they it. Said, he said that, he killed Shanann in the house and then the kids were like walking around with him while he was like dragging her dead body out and then he like loaded them up in the car now I don't know if this is true either because I feel like the kids were dead because yeah but, the way he walked around the car it didn't seem like he loaded any like kids in the video mm-hmm. but he he said that the one girl asked him um are we gonna end up like mommy and then didn't, she was like crying and then he said the last thing she said to me was no daddy but like the other one didn't fight back she was like yeah, they said in the autopsy that like the one didn't fight, but the other one definitely knew what was going on. Which is was it the so older one or sad. the younger one? I guess it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm not sure. They're both like about the same age. They were like three, three and, and four. four. But um, yeah. And his wife, I forgot. His wife is pregnant. People, remember this. She's pregnant, and like uh. it's so gross. Like in the one interview, the after the interview after the fact, because he did a jailhouse interview after he was convicted, because he ended up pleading like taking a plea deal and he got three consecutive life sentences for the deaths of his wife and two daughters and 48 years for unlawful termination of a pregnancy which will run consecutive with three life sentences and he's receiving a total of 36 years for disposing of all three bodies which is 12 years for each victim um so this dude's never getting out of jail and we actually the only one that still feels that's a little light <laughs> yeah too light actually his Shanann's parents begged the uh, judge yeah, to the judge not and, like, the... give him death because death penalty is in Colorado. And he actually says that in an interview with the police. He's like, the death penalty isn't an option, is it? When the officer had asked him, if something bad happened to your kids, what do you think we should do with the person who did it? He's like, oh. Which is like, yeah, anybody... this guy was so stupid. Like this was like classic like stuff, you know, that's like, like you're any guilty. normal person would have been like, hang them or like, you know, like, like, or like, shoot no, them. no, the worst the possible thing that behind... could have happened to them. I want to happen to mm-hmm. them. So my, so my children, if they're not returned to me safe, then I want them all gone. It's crazy. I'll be like Liam Neeson. Yeah. So he says, he actually <laughs> says he gets real nervous and he's like, well, you know, they'd have to go to jail for a long time. And then the officer's they, like... Is the death penalty here? He, the officer says, do you think that, like, the death penalty or, like, capital punishment would be warranted? And he's just like, oh, does Colorado even do that? Like, he's, like, nervous. Like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh... Like, he... 
Yeah, I think the most even, disturbing even in part, the end, like I don't know, he like even in the courtroom, like he's crying and stuff, but like it doesn't seem like he really I has any. He was remorse. crying, like he just was like literally like, so his tense. body language even there was like he was just trying. If he could have like disappeared inside of himself, he would have like and just like turned inside out like a turtle, <laughs> like. Like, not even, like, I don't even think he really cared that he, like, murdered his wife. And oh, his, no. He cared like that, that, like, the world out. was yeah. seeing him for, like, the monster that he was. Like, he didn't care that his kids were dead. He didn't care about anything. Like, when his parents talked, he was like, okay. He was, like, mourning the loss of, like, his own life, you know? And he was like, damn, I'm not going to get to bang this, like, moderately hot office chick that works with me. You know, like. Moderately hot office chick. Yeah. Cause like you know you know what I mean like work like work hot is different than real life hot. Yeah. You're just like mm, they're yeah. okay. That's my work wife. That's my yeah, work wife. Yeah 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 yeah. Like I don't know, but it's a smaller pool. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so that's pretty much like the whole. Um, do you think that we missed anything really? I think we covered basically everything. Yeah, that's pretty much like Chris the. Wallace. All you need to know is he it. viciously murdered his. It's horrible. His and then there's interviews like family. with his mom and it's just obvious that like his mom hated Shanann. His which mom's, like, like so blatant that Shanann made him do this. Like basically. his parents from the very beginning didn't approve of their relationship, didn't like them together, was like like argumentative with her. The one kid had like a peanut allergy and I guess the mom tried to like feed her like peanut ice cream at like a her birthday party and like Shanann went nuts and like flipped out went nuts. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but like good. Um, apparently they just had a lot of turmoil. Like they did not get along very well. And I feel like, like part of me, like not that like his parents are to blame or anything, but part of me feel like that like was one of the reasons in his crazy narcissistic mind that he like justified. He's like, well, my parents don't even get along with her. I can start new with this other girl. Like, I really think he thought that he was going to get away with it and be like the victim that everyone felt bad for. You know, and he really might have gone away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids. <laughs> no, if it wasn't for her friend who was so persistent, you know. That's what you all, everybody needs. Friends like that. For real. Get yourself a friend that will fucking stalk your, stalk your shit. Right. Call your husband a murderer. Like, that's, call 911. Break in you your house. Like, friend. for real. Like, what's I'm the worst case kidding. scenario? You just seem like a crazy friend and your friend's okay. She's like, why'd you call the police on my husband? Like, sorry, I thought he killed you. That's you how, know who Chris how, Watts is? But it's funny. Watch this podcast. You'll know all about him. You'll it's, thank me later. You'll thank me later. <laughs> it's funny because you'll probably lose a ton of friends before you save anyone. But hey, just keep it up, guys. As long as you save one. Have a <sighs> yeah so it's pretty pretty horrible um and like i said we try to take a light approach to things so um you know we're kind of joking around about stuff but for real like a woman lost her life and yeah. her children are gone too and it's just so sad and tragic and hourly they seem to be like the really perfect family um so if there's anyone out there listening that it Feels like they need to get out of the relationship. Just get a divorce. That's okay? what I was there's, gonna say. Like, I, I was gonna go there with it, but I didn't know if it was too like much. But like domestic violence is very real, and I feel like people have a hard time leaving situations or right. even recognizing it. So um, if you have a friend who's in a situation like that, like see something, say something, you guys. You know, listen. We gotta look out for each other. You're you're a stronger person if you can just like leave and still love that person I'm doing her thing instead of just like you know what, let's just erase them off the earth and then I'll be good and just keep on going erase them off the earth <laughs> yeah like what in the hell what kind of a like crazy like, like controlling it, it, narcissistic it, insane person like even like like think like as he's like strangling or you're strangling like whatever it is you're just like as soon as this is done life's gonna go back to normal <laughs> yeah like <laughs> what are you thinking dude and that's like your wife that you married how long we've had multiple kids like he could have not ever loved her or cared about her like i think he was just like a narcissist like like sociopathic like psychopath like, i don't know what category he would fall in there but there was something wrong with this dude like for him to be entitled to think he could just do that yeah. and get away with it and then just continue that whole morning too he was like on his phone the whole time on the body cam footage and he's like texting like his mistress what the whole time, time was it when they did the the body cam was it later in the day yeah it was like so afternoon it was like, like probably like well, around like four or five o'clock was her appointment was at two or three, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was like in the afternoon. All crazy. I can say, I don't know exact time, but it was definitely like af in the afternoon. That's crazy. Because um, he went to work early and was gone for a few hours and her friend came there. Um, 
Yeah, it was disgusting. So, so disgusting. Everyone, don't kill your spouse. Just get a divorce. Yeah, just get a divorce, people. Like, there's no need to do this. And, for it. and there's no good ending. Like, no, there's no good outcome for any anyone involved. Because uh -uh. even even Chris Watts and his family, like, they're victims. Like, not Chris Watts necessarily, but his family now has had, you know, their, their grandkids names, taken like, away. With it their, now. Yeah, their names are associated with this guy. They lost their son because yeah. he's in jail forever. Um, they probably lost like their the grandchildren. Idea of, they got lost their daughter-in-law, who they didn't really like. But, but still, you know, that's. But like I don't a whole think thing. they'd wish death on her. Like, who's to say? But yeah, there's some pretty interesting um, interviews out there with him and everything. So look more into it. Um, send us an email. Drop us a line for what you think we should cover next, as far as true crime, or if we missed anything. Maybe um, Chuck Elderberry. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Next time we are going to talk about Chuck Elderberry. Um, thank you guys for listening and watching. This is the Aaron in Wonderland podcast. Yeah. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron in Wonderland and become a Patreon, um, patreon.com slash Aaron in Wonderland. And remember to stay weird. Stay really weird. Because you know the truth why? is out there. Yeah, it is.